and welcome everyone to <laughs> Dates and Infectious Diseases, late 20th century edition. I am your host, R.L. Ayler, and today we will be competing for fabulous prizes, including candy, and for our grand prize winner, this textbook provided by the fine people at Merck Pharmaceuticals. Now, you all will have your choice of the textbook or another special prize, a box of peeps. You can choose a box of yellow peeps, or you can choose a box of orange peeps. One thing for sure, you'll be able to post a Twitter photo that says, these are my peeps. <laughs> Let's go over some housekeeping before we begin. So. With the answering of a correct question, you will get one piece of candy. Please do not eat the candy. That counts as a point. <laughs> and if you eat the candy, you will be ejected because we're not allowed to eat food in here. <laughs> Nevertheless, at the end of the competition, question number 20, there are 20 questions, will be a multiple point question which will allow anyone potentially the opportunity to come from behind and win the competition. That question will be by secret ballot, and I will tabulate the results at the end of the competition. The person with the, and award candy appropriately, the person with the most candy will win our grand prize on Dates and Infectious Diseases, late 20th century edition. All right. Are there any questions before we begin? In that case, let's go to our first question. Question number one. This potentially deadly disease was first reported in 1967 in the European town in which it was ultimately named. Was it A. Lyme disease, B. Norwalk agent, C. Marburg disease, D. Freiburg fever? We're going to, for the even questions, we're going to start on the left. For the odd, for the odd questions, we'll start on the left. The even will start on the right. Per the suggestion of one of our audience members. So we're going to start on the left. Ray, choose your answer. Uh, I'll say B. B? Okay. Very good. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That was. Please disregard that. C? Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay, so who said C? Raise your hand. All right. Let's see if you're correct. The correct answer is. Yes. C! Congratulations! <laughs> All right, you said C, right? C? C? C. Oh my good yikes. And C. Very good. Thank you very much. Some more some more applause and approval. There we go for C. And for those of you who selected other answers. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. So the cut well, are we getting warmed up? Let's start the competition. And by the okay, so factoid Marburg a phylovirus produces severe disease in humans and non-human primates in the form of a viral hemorrhagic fever. So remember I said it, th this potentially deadly disease was first reported in 1967 in the European town. So what country is Marburg in in Europe? Germany. Very good. So Lyme disease of course named after Lyme Connecticut. Connecticut. Norwalk agent named after Norwalk Ohio and Freiburg fever doesn't exist. It's factitious. I just threw that in to stump you all. Thank you very much. All right. So let's go on to question number two. 1968 was well, will be well remembered as containing one of the 20th century's 
greatest viral pandemics the responsible virus was a Ebola B smallpox C influenza or D measles so 1968 had one of the 20th century's greatest viral pandemics which one is it we'll start on the right Amy You're going to skip. You, you pass. Okay. Suganya. So You're picking D. Okay. Lily. Influenza C. Influenza C. Joe. Okay. Okay. Okay, which one of you said D? Let's see if you're correct. <laughs> the correct answer is C. Raise your hand if you said C. Awesome. This time, Jolly Ranchers. Keep your hand raised, please. I can only do two things at once. There you go. C. Oops. See? So throw that one out. <laughs> if you lose your candy under the desk, your point is disqualified, so hold on to it. Okay, so factoid. The uh, H3N2 Hong Kong flu pandemic of 1968 and 1969 is said to have killed over 33,000 Americans during the outbreak. Okay, and I have depicted the corresponding virus on the slide. So take a photo impression of that. All right, everybody's getting warmed up. Who has not answered a question correctly? You will not be identified in the podcast. Raise your hand. Okay, I don't mean to embarrass you, but... Um, oh, you've got candy? Okay. Amy. You're, all right, so... Oh, I named, mentioned your name, but uh, you will, this will not be posted on Facebook. Sorry. Amy Poehler. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to question number three. The first edition of this legendary infectious diseases publication was released in 1969. Was it Mandel's Principles and Practice of Infectious Disease, Up-to-Date Infectious Diseases, The Sanford Guide to Antimicrobial Therapy, C, or D, Gomps Clinical Pearls. Put a shout out to Gomps Clinical Pearls in the podcast. <laughs> All right, so which one is it? We'll start on the left. Ray? C? C. C? Okay, everyone pick C. Let's see if you're correct. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you are correct. The Sanford Guide. Everybody gets a piece of candy. And because you all, um, all, all answered the question correctly, we're talking premium candy here. So <laughs> Halloween is here again. Congratulations. You cannot eat them. The wrapper does not count. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if you lose your candy under the desk, you are does not count. <laughs> All right, very good. And just for our educational correlation, so Mandel's Principles of Practice of Infectious Disease stems from 1979. Up-to-date infectious diseases and up-to-date in general started in 1992. It's celebrating its 22nd anniversary. GOMPS Clinical Pearls was first published in 2007. My kudos to my colleague, Dr. GOMPS. And just some more information about the Sanford Guide. And uh, this is in a corresponding podcast on idpodcast.net. 
The Sanford Guide was named after original author Jay Sanford, former dean of the United States uh, Uniformed Health Services University. It was originally nicknamed The Little Green Book. It was one of the first publications to be distributed by educational partners. That's why everybody had it in their pocket for so many years. Um, the authorship is now in the uh, five different authors with Jay Sanford's death uh, in 1996. I once met him. He was a very nice man. And it's currently in its 43rd edition. And this was what the first edition of the Sanford Guide looked like. So, wow, you really had to have a magnifying glass and, uh, and, and, uh, or reading glasses. And there were so little anti microbials back in 1969. We have, we're, it's so much easier to practice infectious disease, isn't it? Except for all that antimicrobial resistance. We have a, a, a latecomer welcome, welcome, or joining us. Welcome to uh, Dates and ID, late 20th century edition. So everyone, who has answered every question correctly? Raise your hand. So these are our leaders presently. All right. Well, there's still plenty of opportunity for those of you to catch up who have not uh, answered every question correctly and the questions do get harder so without further ado let's move on to question number four following a pandemic that produced an estimated 12.5 million US cases from 1962 to 1965 the first vaccination f the first vaccine I should say for this important childhood exanthem was licensed in 1969. This vaccine was licensed in 1969. Is it A. Rubella, B. Measles, C. Mumps, or D. Chickenpox? So you have to pick one of the four. We'll start on the right. Amy. Just pick anything. Picking D. Okay. Suganya. You're picking B. Okay. Lily? B? Okay. Joe? With B, was it? In the back? Okay. Everybody is picking B. And let's see if you're correct. The correct answer is A. Nobody got it correct. <laughs> oh, well, our studio audience didn't like that answer, so sorry about that. All right, so the correct answer is A, rubella. And the rubella li vaccine was first licensed in 1969. Now, it wasn't long after that that rubella became combined in the MMR vaccine. So here's an extra credit question to make up because nobody got that one correct. You knew, you knew what was happen. <laughs> in what year and by what, which drug company was the combined MMR vaccine made available for pediatric vaccination. So let's see who can make it up. And we'll start on the left. Which year? Was it A, 1971 by Merck, B, 1972 by Glaxo, C, 1973 by Pfizer, or D, 1974 by Upjohn? Your, your answer, please. A. A, 1971. B. D, 1974. A. Okay. A. A. Go with B. Okay. Amy is a pharmacist and she said A. Let's see if she's correct. The correct answer is indeed A. Congratulations. Who picked A? Raise your hand. All right. Very good. 
Remember, if you if you oh, all right, can someone uh, give that back to its intended recipient? Okay, congratulations. So it was a that oh, and I didn't get yours either, did I? There you go. All right, there you go. Okay, so who has answered every question correctly so far? Raise your hand. Raise your, so no, that's right. Okay, so who has answered four questions correctly? All right, wow. Very good, okay. So the, MM, the MMR vaccine was first licensed for, and made available for pediatric vaccination in 1971. So it wasn't that long after rubella became available that there was an MMR vaccine. So yours truly, who was born in sometime in the 60s, that's all I'm going to say, was, did receive the MMR vaccine. It would have been hard for Dr. Gomf's pearls to be published in 1960. Exactly, because Dr. <laughs> Gomf would have been about six years old then. So, you know, I throw these out. You have to think about it, you know, in order to get the answer correctly. All right. Very good. Question number six. In 1972, this antibiotic was developed and made available by Beecham Pharmaceuticals and soon became the world's most popular antibiotic. Is it A, erythromycin, B, amoxicillin, C, ciprofloxacin, or D, trimethoprim sulfa? And we're going to start over here. Amy, you're a pharmacist, so you should know this. B, amoxicillin. Okay. Joe, are you going to go with the rest of the pack? You could be wrong. Or are you going to go with what everyone's saying? All right. Okay. Who said A? Raise your hand if you said A. Let's see if you're correct. The correct answer is... It's actually B! <laughs> Amy was correct yet again. Okay, so... If you answered B, raise your hand. All right. So, Ganya, I didn't want to throw you out. I want to make sure every... Oh, my goodness, what happened there? That one exploded. Are you... Do you want another one? Is that... Are you good? Okay. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, if you see any candy fragments on the floor, please, please pick them up because I don't... Then we'll never be in here again. All right. Congratulations. Okay, who am I missing out? Okay. Very... Vivian, you you're not supposed to eat your candy. <laughs> oh, it's a piece of something else. Oh, okay, all right, then you're good. <laughs> all right. Okay, very good. So let's move on to question number seven because time's a wasting. You just lost the point. It's not true. In what city oh. was the first recorded case of Legionnaire's disease documented during an American Legion convention in 1976? We Is have it? Pittsburgh. A. B. New York City. C. Philadelphia. D. Atlantic City. We'll start on the left. C. Philadelphia. 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 Saganya? Everybody pick C. Let's see if you're correct. The correct answer is... That just means the time's over. The correct answer is... It is C! Congratulations! Everybody got it. All right. What's that? 
It was. I don't. I, that's a good question, and I don't know the answer. Goodness yeah, gracious. Well, every you all are. I'm making these questions too easy. You all are. Everybody's getting this correctly. Who did not? Everybody got it correctly, right? We all did. Everybody got a. That's right. Congratulations. Okay. I mean, uh, oh my goodness, goodness gracious, that was horrifying. All right. By the way, these are the uh, the the. There's some even some much coveted white Reese's peanut butter cups in there. White chocolate. So hey, this you know this game show is not cheap. You know. <laughs> My ratings better be good on this thing. All right. Well, now let's see you get this question next. It is an extra credit question. The American Legion is a service organization for what group of people? So what group of people? Is it A, Shriners, B, Veterans, C, Veterinarians, D, Gun Owners, or E, Law Enforcement? So which one is it? Amy, we'll start on the right. Law Enforcement. Suganya. So Must answer quickly. Gun owners. Lily? Law enforcement. Shriners. Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Okay. Let's see who is correct. That's that time is up. So, who answered E law enforcement? If you answered law enforcement, you would be you would be wrong. The correct answer is veterans, and we're in a veterans institution. Oh, the humanity. Nobody got that one correct. Oh. Okay. So the sh the American Legion is a service organization for veterans. So Shriners, they're uh, they the Shriners. <laughs> Veterinarians, I don't know. I uh, no, but gun owners would be what? The NRA and law enforcement would be like the Police Benevolent Association or what have you. So now you know. Well, at least I've taught you something. So I feel good about that. Okay, so uh, let's move on here quickly. I'm just trying to get over that one. Okay, our next question is, what hemorrhagic fever virus first emerged in Africa within Sudan and Zaire in 1976 with a mortality rate of as high as 88%? Is it A, Ebola, B, Marburg, C, Machupo, or D, Nipa. I've been told that's the correct way to answer to say Nipa. Um, Your answer quickly. D. A. 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 Okay. Everyone says A. The correct answer is it's A. Who said A? Raise your hands. All right, raise your hands quickly so Dr. Ayler can award you with a Reese's peanut butter cup. There you go. Congratulations. Keep those hands raised. <laughs> Did I miss you over back there? I'm, I'm so sorry. Let me. No, he's like, he didn't answer your name. I'm going to have to rely on the honor system here. If you all are going to lie, no, I'm not saying you're lying. I gave you a candy. No one's going to lie about a piece of candy. All right. So, okay, so who has seven candies? Who has seven candies? Who has six candies? Wow. So, all right, who has eight candies? Anybody have eight? Anybody have more than six candies? Okay, so things are getting kind of interesting. <laughs> All right. So let's, those of you who got this answer correctly, Ebola again, it is correct. 
The first outbreak of, Bo of Ebola was in 1976 within Sudan and, S and Zaire. So, smarty pantses, let's go with this question. What thing was the virus named after? Was it A, a tree, B, a mountain, C, a city, or D, a river? Let's start on the right. Amy, your answer, please. The pressure's on. You must answer quickly. <laughs> we have just a few more seconds. A. Okay. D. Joe? Okay. Are you going to say D or are, could they be wrong? Okay. D? All right. We have, we have a lot of confidence about D. Okay, who said who said B? If you said B, raise your hand. Okay, so who said A? Raise your hand if you said A. We have a couple of A's there. And the answer is I'm sorry, you're you're incorrect. The correct answer is actually D. All right, if you said D, raise your hand. The, the, again, Ebola was named after the Ebola River in Zaire. Congratulations to many of you for answering correctly. All right. Congratulations. Keep, your, keep those hands raised if you do not have candy. All right. Man, I'm going to run out of candy here pretty soon. Okay, very good. So let's move on to question number 11. Time's a waste in here. What perennial scourge of mankind had its last recorded case in Somalia in 1977 and was declared by the WHO to be officially eradicated in 1980? Was it A, polio, B, leprosy, C, smallpox, or D, ORF? We'll start on the left. Um, C. C, smallpox. Are you sure, Vivian, about your answer, or do you want to go against the crowd? C. Okay. Are you sure about that? Okay. Okay, who did not say C? Raise your hand. Everyone said C. Well, then you would be right. The correct answer is C. Of course, smallpox was officially eradicated in 1980. And is there anything else on there that was officially eradicated? Anyone? Okay, polio was. Uh, is that, are you sure about that? There's still cases of polio globally. I th well, I think if it's, if we're still having cases, it's not officially been eradicated, but okay. All right. Now, for cases where everybody gets it in the interest of Preserving our candy, I am not going to award candy for that, okay? The question's too easy. Now, I would award candy, except I'm running low, so. All right, so there has to be somebody who gets the question wrong. All right, let's move on to our next question, number 12. What year did AIDS first gain recognition as a syndrome by the Centers for Disease Control? Was it 1979? Who saw American Hustle? Awesome movie. Happened in 1979. Okay, you do not get candy for that, by the way. B is 1980, C is 1981, or D is 1982. And this is an even question, so I go to my right. Amy, your answer, and you must answer quickly. Amy, pick C. Suganya. 
Chaganya picks B. C. Vivian, are you sh are you going to go with the rest of the grain? Or are you going to go your own way? Plus or minus is so hard. Uh, I'm going to go with D. All right, you're going to go with D. C. C. All right. So who picked D? Who picked D? Raise your hand if you picked D. And you would be incorrect. I'm sorry. Oh wait a minute. Sorry about that. Uh, there's a mix. The crowd is very unsettled. Who picked C? Raise your hand. And you are awarded candy officially. So the Centers for Disease Control did officially ad uh, identify the syndrome of HIV AIDS. Keep your hands raised if you answered correctly. All right. <laughs> Suganya, did you, did you answer C? No, okay. All right. Okay, very good. In 1981. So you know that answer. Okay, Smarty Pants is in the audience. Let's see if you can get this one. It's a related question. All right. X for extra credit. Now, AIDS was not known as AIDS when it was first recognized. Which of the following was an early designation for HIV AIDS infection? Was it A, grind, B, grid, C, sieve, D, chud, or E, shield? Which one was it? And, and this is an odd question, so I'll start to my left. Answer quickly. Um, D. You're picking D. Okay. C? Vivian says B. C? B? All right. So, who answered? Who answered? B. All right. Keep those hands raised. Your answer is correct. So it was B, GRID. That is correct. And what does the acronym for GRID stand for? Who, somebody, whoever yells it out first gets candy. Vivian. Congratulations. All right. I'll accept GRID uh, for gay-related immunodeficiency. Okay, so if you got the answer correct, the previous answer correct, keep your hands raised so I can throw you candy. All right, very good. Very good. Very good. There you go. I'm sorry, Joe, to skipped you there. Yeah, anyone else? Anyone else to not get candy? Okay, very good. So what does the rest of these stand for? What does GRIND stand for? Make up your own because that is completely made up. All right, SIV is simian immunodeficiency virus related to HIV. How about CHUD? What does CHUD stand for? That was a movie from 1984, Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. It was a great movie. Check it out. It happened around this time. Any, anyone see CHUD? Anybody? No, I'm the only one? Okay. All right. Well, I guess I... How about SHIELD? What is SHIELD? It's an 80s movie from 84. What is S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D. is from the Marvel Comics universe. It stands for uh, Strategic um, Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. I should have thrown that out as an extra credit question. If you knew what S.H.I.E.L.D. stands for. There's even... <laughs> Does, does anyone watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC? Nobody watched that show? You did? Okay, there you go. Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. All right. Very good. All right, so uh, we will move on then to question number 14. Who first described prions in 1982? He was later awarded the Nobel Prize in 1997. <coughs> Was it Luc Montagnier, or B, Robert Gallo, C, Willy Bergdorfer, D, 
Stanley Prusner or E. Carl D. Anderson? Okay, this is an even question, so I'll start on my right. Amy, answer quickly. She selects B. Carl D. Anderson. Stanley Prusner. D. All righty. Who, the time is up. Who picked B? Robert Gallo. Raise your hand if you pick B. Amy picked B. Amy, your answer, unfortunately, is, is incorrect. I'm sorry. The people picked D were correct. Yeah, correct answer is actually D, Stanley Prusner. And that's a picture of him with... Uh, I'm sure uh, 1980s hair in, uh, in that picture. So, so as you know, Luc Montagnier and Robert Gallo in the early 1980s first identified the HIV virus. Willy Bergdorfer, Borrelia Bergdorferi, the etiologic agent of Lyme disease, and Carl D. Anderson, I think one of you picked that, actually invented or discovered muons not prions muons is an elementary particle so sorry I just threw that in for uh, just to mess with you alright so if you picked D raise your hand congratulations to many of you alright and I'm sorry now better luck next time to the rest of you there we go. oh my goodness ouch somebody got bean there there we go oh my goodness Goodness gracious. All right. Well, let's continue on. Okay. The, f the first antiretroviral to be developed in 1986, Dr. Ayler was in college back then, was A, DDI, B, DDC, C, D4T, D, AZT, E, 3TC. It's all alphabet soup. This is an odd question, so I'll begin to my left. 3TC. You're picking AZT. You sound sure of yourself, my friend. Are you as sure? ACT. Remember, Amy is a pharmacist. Is she correct? The correct answer. And let's see if Amy's correct. The correct answer is indeed. Is it E? It is not E. It is actually D. Azithromycine, AZT, was the first antiretroviral. And if you answered correctly, please raise your hand. Congratulations. I hope I don't put you into sugar shock. <laughs> if you do, we have insulin available in the hospital. All right, did I miss anyone? Very good. All right, well, we have five questions left. So the competition is getting pretty severe now. Who has more than who has eight candies if you have eight candies raise your hand Ray oh you do okay how many have nine candies nine candies Ray has nine candies anyone else have more than nine candies how many people have eleven candies okay who has twelve candies does anyone have twelve candies all right so this Remember, it sounds like most of you are within five candies of, of the other, so you still have the capability to win this competition. This is getting exciting. That's right. Vivian, you still have an opportunity. Okay. So did I have two questions, 15? I have apologized for that. So what form of viral hepatitis 
which form was first identified in 1989. Dr. Ehler was in medical school. So was it A, hepatitis A, B, hepatitis B, C, hepatitis C, D, hepatitis D, or E, hepatitis E? Don't get mixed up just because the letters are different. Actually, they're not. I'm just throwing that out. Okay, so this is an odd question. So I'm going to start to my left. Which one is it? You are saying hepatitis C. Are you sure, my friend? I don't know. Let's find out. I'll say hepatitis E. Are you sure about that, hepatitis E? Vivian, answer quickly. Did you say B? E, okay. D? Joe, answer quickly. Um, <laughs> time is up. No, okay. A? E? D? Okay, who said hepatitis E? Raise your hand. I'm sorry, you would be incorrect. The correct answer is... Hepatitis C. Who said C? Raise your hand. You are awesome. And that deserves a, a uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. How about that? Awesome. The correct answer is C. Hepatitis C was first identified in 1989. And before that, it was known as. Who's going to answer that? Answer first, and you get a candy. He knew it again. He gets another candy. All right. He's coming back. So hepatitis C first answered in first in 1990. I'm sorry, 1989. All right. Now this question requires a knowledge of sports and medicine. So let's see who gets it. On what sports team did a famous American athlete play who announced he was HIV positive in 1991? Too easy. Too easy. Okay. Amy, who is it? Now, B. L. A. Lakers. So you must know who that is. All right. I didn't realize all of you were L.A. Lakers fans. How about that? So, so I assume, so I assume that all of you know who that is. If you yell at the answer, you get a candy. I think it was Joe, actually. I think it was Joe. I think it was Joe. <laughs> Sorry, I heard him first. Maybe it was the sound transmission. He was closer. All right. So it was Magic Johnson, and uh, and that is the correct answer. So well, has there been another athlete who's announced he's HIV positive publicly? Who? Dennis Rodman is not HIV positive. He's just crazy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. As a matter of fact. HIV positivity and even being a homosexual in in the sports world is still very controversial. Thus, the first um, athlete in the NFL coming out is openly gay. And whoever mentions that person gets a candy. All right, Vivian. How about that? Yeah. See the, those. What was his name again? Michael Sam's. Sam, right? Very good. Wow, I'm impressed. All right. So, so <laughs> it's that it's it's frowned upon if you're a game football unless you're really good at football. So and then, fine. right. <laughs> so let's see if if just the really the average players can come out. <laughs> All right. Okay. In what year were the Americas declared polio free? Was it 1994, 1995, 1996? Or D, is it the Americas are not polio free? And this is an odd question, so I start to my left. The, uh, you're saying D, the Americas are not polio free. Are you sure about that? Ray, are you sure that's in fact correct? You're going to say D. Vivian. D, just based on my previous. 
Are you sure about that? Do you want to change your answer? I'm going to give you a chance. All right. You're going to say D. I'm sorry, did you say E? D. D, okay. All right. Well, I got to tell you, you know, everybody seemed to agree that the answer was D. Let's see if you're correct. I am sorry. The correct answer is A. But uh, remember I said from the Americas, the lingering polio in the world is not in the Americas. It's in four high endemic countries, I believe. Pakistan, India, um, Afghanistan, there's one other, I think in, in Asia. I, I forget I forget what, maybe it's Indonesia, I'm not sure. But the Americas are in fact polio free and they have been for 20 years. Thank you all for playing, but nobody got that answer. That's right. All right. Well, we're getting close to the end of our game, so let's move on to question number 18. And my phone just died, so you're going to have to give me a minute. There will be no music for this section. <laughs> I'm getting the dreaded white screen here. In 2000, a new infectious entity killed up to 100 people in Malaysia and led to the mass slaughter of a million livestock to contain the outbreak. It was identified as, bear with me here, is it A, the Hantan virus, B, the Marburg virus, C, the Machupo virus, or D, the Nipah virus. So A, Hantan, B, Marburg, C. Machupo or D. Nipah virus. Which one is it? And this is an even question, so I'm going to go to my right. Amy. D. Nipah. Now remember, Amy is a pharmacist. I've said that repeatedly. <laughs> so she could be wrong here. D. The Nipah virus. D. Are you sure? Are you going to say D like the rest, or are you going to break out on your own and get a point? Answer quickly. Joe? So you're saying D? Okay then. A, Hanton virus. D, the Nipah virus. We have a few seconds on this question. All right, everybody said D except for one person. I, I applaud your setting out on your own. So, unfortunately, most of you are, actually all of you are correct, <laughs> except for one person. Sorry. The correct answer is D, the Nipah virus. And I will say, parenthetically, that one of our former fellows did a lot of the work on the Nipah virus, Eva Quiroz, who's in Dr. Montero's year, so look her up. I think she's now in private practice, but that's a, to my com commendation, Eva Quiroz, for doing a lot of work and going to Malaysia as an EIS officer and doing a lot of work on the Nipah virus. Remember, it's not the Nipah virus, it's the Nipah virus. It's fun to say. Let's all say Nipah. Nipah. Excellent. Very good. Thank you all very much. So actually, most of you get candy. Well, all but one person got candy. No, we 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 still have enough. We still have enough. All right, all right. I'm going to throw. No, I, I was a, that was a fake. I'm actually throwing candy to the rest of the back group. <laughs> oh man, good night. All right, boy, Amy, you'll be getting. Oh, Chiganya, I didn't. See. All right. Amy has been answering some questions. Okay, we're down to our next to last question. Okay, this is exciting. Question number 19. What deadly infection first appeared in the U.S. in 2000? Was it SARS? Was it avian influenza H5N1? Was it MEV1? Was it West Nile virus or was it 
the hantavirus. This is an odd question, so I start to my left. Your answer quickly. B. Avian influenza. E. Hantavirus. Answer quickly, Vivian. You only have a few seconds left. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Sorry. Okay. You just got on the wire. Your answer, please. Quickly. A, SARS. D. Joe, a few seconds. You're saying A. Are you sure? Amy? Amy's picking D, West Nile virus. Okay. Which one of you picked D? Which one of you picked D? If you picked D. Okay. Which one of you picked D? Oh, I'm I'm so sorry, but but your bellies will be full of candy because you are in fact correct. All right. Good job for those of you who picked Ray. Keep your hands raised if you picked D. <laughs> so, Gani, why don't you just take that one? No, did you did you select D? Oh, okay, then give it back. Okay, then don't take it. All right. So let's go over again. SARS came 2002 to 2003, killed 800 people. Avian influenza has actually never been in the U.S. MEV is a fictional virus from a movie. What movie was it? Contagion. Right, so if you pick that one, nobody picked that one, right? Then you're a movie buff. Hantavirus, of course, was Sin Nombre virus from the Four Corners area of the American Southwest in 1993. West Nile virus emerged in New York City in 2000. So the correct answer was D. Okay, so if you think you have the most candy, give me a number. How many pieces of candy do you have? Does anybody have more than 13? So, how many people have 12 pieces of candy? Okay, Vivian is, is next in line. How many people have 11? Okay, 10 pieces of candy. If you have 10 pieces of candy. Okay, Amy, how many pieces of candy do you have? So, Joe and I are tied at So, 10. So, Ganya, how many pieces of candy? Eight pieces. So, all of you, virtually everyone in this room has a shot for question number 20. Now, does everybody have a pen? All right. Someone help me out here because I'm tethered. Pass out these pieces of paper. The, these are, this is, you only have 10? <laughs> you have a, don't have a pen? Okay. All right. If you don't have a pen, share. I am going to show you pictures, five pictures of five infectious agents. And if you know their identity, write down their, their name. Okay? I don't know. What do you think? Let's just do total because um, if you get the, crest, the question correct, then you get that number of pieces of candy and you stand to win. Okay? And I, I'm going to go you one better. If you like the box of peeps better than, than you like the book, you can select that. But once again, I will say this is a wonderful book, Introduction to Medical Mycology, with a lot of pictures, color photographs, and pictures of fungi. That will be a great addition to your medical library, sponsored by the fine folks at Merck. So does everyone have their piece of paper and it's everyone ready to write their okay so I haven't told you what type of infectious agent this is yet so start your thinking caps because these are not bacteria these are not fungi these are not muons which is not even an infectious agent All right. these are viruses so you have one minute. When this timer counts down, you then must hand your thing up to the front. Yeah, you're the it's a family of virus. Well, no, it's actually it's a virus. You should know 
the virus, the virus when, when these come up. up. These are five, these are five viruses. viruses. So you should, so be, you able should be able to name them. Well, actually, I will accept in some cases. I will accept a family virus. Virus. Okay. Okay. So. So. Here they are. They are actually. Actually, they ask you all to make yourself faster. Just to make you faster. Faster. So just stop writing. Writing on the sixteen. Let's let's we'll stop writing. Stop writing. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to describe. describe. Virus, Virus A. A. It looks very looks bright, bright, and, and um, has little has thingies, little thingies around, it. around it. It's all. It's all. Virus, Virus B, B appears B to be a clump thing, thing of circular, circular viruses. viruses. Virus, Virus three, C three C is some sort of squiggly thing. thing. Virus, Virus D, D has an odd, has an odd, odd structure. structure. Seems, to, Seems be to be kind of uh, shaped like, like something, something else I might remember. And virus, virus E, it looks like a bunch of circles in an array. Okay, so start writing. Just to make it more exciting, I'm cranking up the music. We have 10 seconds left. Four seconds. Three seconds. You know what? I can tell everybody's puzzled. So I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. But that's my final offer. Okay, 30 seconds. Write down your name of the virus. Now, one of these viruses you may have seen earlier. I'm not going to say which one. It's a little clue. Okay, sorry. That's the, that's the only thing I'm saying. Okay, we have reached our final period. And, all right, put your pens away. Now, how many people answered, put a blank, in, or answered every blank? So most people did. Okay. All right. Now, remember, honor system, everybody, everybody police everybody else in your row, because I'm tethered. So... The correct answer for A, now what is, what is special about that virus? It looks kind of like, it looks like a, like a sun. It looks like a sun, like a crown. So what virus is that? Corona. And what specific virus? I will accept Corona, but what specific virus is that? SARS. SARS. Excellent. That is correct. Amy, did you get that one? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay, B, you may have seen before or may not have. So what virus is that that we referred to earlier? How many people said influenza for that? You would be correct. It was actually B was, was influenza, so you got that correct. So if you got, a cor if you got an answer uh, correct, check it. You put a check next to it. If you got it wrong, put an X, okay, for grading purposes. All right. C is, looks like a squiggly line. So how many people said Ebola? What if he said the family? What, what, what? Phy Phylovirus. Phylovirus, what do you think? Should we accept that, Phylovirus? I mean, it's a Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to rule on this. I'm going to rule on this to accept Phylovirus because I think most, more people, more people said phylovirus, or fewer people said phylovirus. That actually requires some additional level of knowledge. Because some of you may have looked at that and said it means Ebola. So I'll accept either phylovirus or Ebola. So how many people put either phylovirus or Ebola? Raise your hand. Okay, if you did, mark that with a check. If you did not, mark it with an X. Okay, we're getting to the harder ones now. You noticed. Okay, so D. D kind of looks like something the NRA would put in a gun. I'm just saying. It looks like a bullet. So, you know, for this particular one, um, so who said orthopox virus? Okay. You know what? That's, that's actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept that 
because it actually requires some knowledge of viruses. And the point here is we're trying to learn. So I, I will accept either orthopox or rabies. How many people said either orthopox or rabies? Raise your hand. Okay, three people said orthopox. So Mar if you got that correctly, check it. If you got it incorrectly, um, then measure it, then, then put an X by it. Okay, so if somebody got E, I will be extremely 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 as I like to say impressed because I had no idea this virus I actually it was very hard so who so let's take a guess okay what is that do you have any idea if you don't have an idea that's okay coronavirus HIV vaccinia okay Okay. You did not guess. All right. This was a, a major public health problem decades ago. It was not normally a fatal infection, but it sickened a lot of people and it was contagious. And some people who had this virus still carry scars to this day they're still disabled from having this infection. Who said polio? You would be correct. Unfortunately you had to get to guess it. So, But it, the correct answer is polio virus. That is a polio virus. Okay so if you since you all did not get that correct mark it with an X. Okay now I'm going to require all of you to measure your correct answers on this and your number of candy and then uh, put a number on the top, including your name, and then I will announce the winner. And that person will be awarded either their choice of a wonderful textbook or a pack of peeps. So while you're tabulating, we'll put on game show music. This is called tabulation music. <laughs> okay. All right, I'd like you all to deposit your, just deposit your, or pass them up to the front when you have an answer. Okay, let's see who's going to be our winner. Remember, Vivian is defending her title. <laughs> okay. Is everybody is everybody tabulated or is anybody turned in there? Nope. Every these are everybody's answers? Okay. Okay, when, uh, let me see. No. Okay. Okay, I am studying the results. I don't like that actually. There we go. I don't like that one either. Okay, let's try that one. The anticipation is weighing on heavily on everyone. Okay. Okay. To David, Suganya, Amy, and John. Thank you for playing. I'm sorry. Well, not a better luck next time, but I will say that everyone in this room performed admirably, and I was truly impressed with your knowledge base.
I thought I was going to stump everybody with these questions. Okay. In fourth place, Ray had 13 points. Still an excellent showing. Okay. We had three finalists. Finalist number three, I was truly impressed by your knowledge base and you will be awarded either a textbook or a box of peeps. Finalist number two, I again was truly impressed with your knowledge base. You may or may not have been a runner-up in this competition or a winner. And our winner was the clear favorite with 16 points. But don't despair runners up uh, two and three. The, you all were one point behind, so it was very close. So our two runners up are I'll announce our three runners up first. I hope, hope to, sorry to keep you all in anticipation. Our three finalists are Vivian, Joe, and Lily. Okay? Vivian, you are one of our two runners up. Your journey ends here. But we have some lovely parting prizes for you. That leaves Joe and Lily remaining. Lily and Joe. Joe and Lily, you put up a great competition. You both persevered. One of you did as well as Vivian, but I just happened to mention you two last. Your scores were separated by one point. The correct, the, w the winner of our competition, is it Joe or is it Vivian? Or is it, or, I mean, is it Joe or is it Lily? Forgive me. Lily? You are, you are our runner up, Joe! You are a winner! <laughs> With 16 points, you get to select a textbook, a box of peeps, or another box of peeps. <laughs> Joe, what is your selection going to be? My belly says peeps. <laughs> <laughs> a wise choice, Grasshopper. We will then award our two boxes of peeps to our two semifinalists. Congratulations to both of you. This completes our dates and infectious disease. Thank you all for playing. <laughs>